All right, welcome on in to the KSL Sports front page. I'm Mitch Harper, your BYU insider for kslsports.com. Joining me today on this Selection Sunday edition of the front page is Trevor Allen, Utah insider and also digital producer for kslsports.com and KSL News Radio host and talent Cougar on Cougar Sports Saturday, Matt Biamonte. We're breaking down the big news as both BYU and Utah State are going dancing. We knew about BYU, they were going to be a lock, but Utah State gets into the field, and comfortably, I might add, we're breaking it all down. You can share your commentary with us, connect with us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, wherever you're watching, share your comments. But first, before we get into all the breakdown, I wanted to mention on the screen here, you see kslsports.com's Bracket Mayhem and KSL News Radio and kslsports.com have teamed up with Wasatch Credit Association for Bracket Mayhem starting today, March 14th. Visit kslsports.com to fill out your bracket and you can win big. Challenge your friends, coworkers, or see how you stack up against our KSL Sports team. It's Bracket Mayhem from KSL News Radio and kslsports.com. So go on the website, you'll see a big banner so you can fill out your bracket. Probably beat me because I'm not very good at these bracket <laughs> challenges. Matt, I already know, is a aficionado when it comes to great bracket play. Trevor, are you pretty good at this stuff? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hand it off to my uh, five-year-old and let him pick it out. And nice. and I'll, I'll probably do better. And yeah, to be strategy. honest with you, my only goal in this whole thing, Mitch, I don't want to win the whole thing. I just want to beat Matt. That's all I want to do. <laughs> well, good luck. I don't think you're going to do it, Trevor. If, for you're, those of you participating, follow my bracket. That, that's a little tip. And to Matt's credit, he did predict on Cougar Sports Saturday yesterday that BYU would get a six seed. And he also, I think you said Michigan State could be a possibility, if I'm not mistaken, Matt. So credit to you. And that's where we'll start things off is BYU – Gets a six seed. I think well-deserved six seed. I think that could have been a case for maybe a five. But I think six was the sweet spot where I think BYU felt they should be seated. And that's where the committee goes with BYU. Matt, what's your reaction to BYU getting a six seed and waiting on either the winner of UCLA and Michigan State? It's well-deserved. Uh, they challenged themselves in the non-conference portion of play. And I think the committee respected that. And then the WCC, Mitch, had a, a really solid year. They had some some quality teams, teams that we used to – not bad an eye at, but teams that you just looked at on the schedule and said, oh, that's easy, Loyola Marymount. That's a team that, that's that's improved. And earlier in the year on Cougar Sports Saturday, I was like, oh, those are going to be easy wins. And, and Loyola proved me wrong. They were a decent team. Pepperdine, as we saw multiple times this year, was a solid team. So I thought between the improved play of the WCC as a whole – Plus, the way that they challenge themselves in the non-conference, you get wins against San Diego State on the road. They are six seed. Uh, you, you beat Utah State on the road. They're in the field of 68. So I thought it was it was well deserved, and it's just nice for once for BOU to be on the side where they get the benefit of the doubt from the committee because it seems like so often it's it's the it's a it's a running joke amongst Cougar fans, Mitch. Oh, we think they're going to be a six. Mark them two or three spots lower because they don't get the benefit of the doubt. That was certainly not the case this year. Yeah, BYU going to be tipping off on Saturday. They'll wait on the opponent of Michigan State or UCLA. Two name brand teams that don't feel like 11 seeds, but I think they could be favorable matchups for BYU. The percentages and the odds would suggest that anytime a six seed plays an 11, regardless of their name brand, about 63% of the time the, the six seed comes out victorious. And BYU, if you're filling out your bracket on, bra on kslsports.com on Bracket Mayhem, uh, last four times BYU has been a seven seed or higher. Uh, they've advanced to at least the round of 32. So there's reason for optimism for Cougar fans. Trevor, what was your thoughts on, on BYU landing the six seed? And, and this matchup, because you cover the Pac-12, is there any intel you can share about this UCLA team if the Cougars do face the Bruins? I tell you, that was actually a team who was who was picked to win the Pac-12. Um, and, you know, they, they, they had a, a very solid start to the year and, um, they, they have a really talented team, but then they lost their their star player, Chris Smith, who tore his ACL. Um, and, you know, a, a, a pretty cool little little nugget out of that is that uh, after that happened, Utah head coach Larry Kraskoviak called up Chris Smith and was uh, talking to him about that injury because Larry suffered the same injury from his playing days. But just, you know, to not, you know, draw attention over to the Utes, but, you know, the Bruins are, are a very quality team. Tiger Campbell is their, is their point guard. He's really, really good. Um, when he stays consistent, you know, there, there are actually times where he doesn't, but as, as far as the, you know, draw for, for BYU, I mean, as, as Matt said, you know, it's, 
it, it it's about time for BYU to get that that kind of respect from from the selection committee. Um, you know, at least where you guys are talking about seating when Utah fans are not talking about seating, they're talking about just trying to make it into the dance um, because it hasn't happened since 2016. But I I would think because Tom Izzo, I mean Mitch, you you and I and and Matt have been covering college basketball for a long time now. This is a down Michigan State team. I know I know that they had a very poor start to the year and kind of turned it on towards the end of the year. But, you know, I, I think that's going to be a really intriguing matchup. I just think the Bruins would, would, would have a better chance of winning because they have a really big chip on their shoulder. They lost their, their last three games of the regular season to teams that were seated higher than them going into the Pac-12 tournament. And then they lost in the first round, or I guess quarterfinals, because they because they got a first round bye, in overtime by four points to Oregon State, who went on to win the Pac-12 championship. So that, you know, it's, it, it, it's very, very crazy to think that, that you know, the Bruins and, and Cougars could play. If you're just joining us, uh, this KSLSports.com breakdown going into the local teams going to the big dance, BYU going to either face Michigan State or UCLA. The Spartans are, are interesting, as you mentioned. They've won uh, five of the last eight. They lost. They had a dud in the Big Ten tournament against Maryland, lost by 11, but they had wins over Michigan, Ohio State, Illinois uh, to really seal the deal for them because they were on the bubble like so many other Blue Bloods in the country, but not a good three-point shooting team, 255th in the country, Sparty is when it comes to knocking down the tray. And as we know in basketball, you got to hit the three ball if you want to go anywhere in the game of basketball these days, college or pro. So something to keep an eye on there. Utah State, there was some sw- they were sweating it out. They're currently in Vegas right now. Uh, they're they're boarding a flight back to Logan, going to be ready, getting ready to go to Indianapolis here pretty soon. But Craig Smith's team for the third year in a row, they punch a ticket to the dance. I know last year. Uh, didn't uh, officially get to go due to COVID-19. But once again, Craig Smith's program is having success, and they're going to take on the Texas Tech Red Raiders. And I think this is a really cool matchup because Chris Beard, uh, one of the better head coaches in college basketball, it's the Matt Wells Bowl if you want to get into the football element with Matt Wells jumping from Utah State to Texas Tech and one of the biggest stars I think this sport has to offer in Mac McClung for the Red Raiders. This is a... A good matchup. I'm curious to see how Craig Smith, uh, his program does in the second go round in the big dance uh, as they showed out well in the 8-9 spot two years ago. Matt, what do you make of uh, the Aggies draw and avoiding the first four? I think it, it mostly shows the respect that the committee had for the upper tier of the Mountain West. Uh, Colorado State narrowly missed out, but that doesn't mean they won't get in because we'll have to we'll have to see how the testing goes. They're right there in the mix. If, if someone has to drop out, Colorado State could slide on in. But I think it also uh, a lot of respect for Nemus Keda, who had a really outstanding year for Utah State, uh, defensive player of the year f- for them in the Mountain West. So. I was surprised that they weren't in a playing game, but I, I just, again, I think it goes to show that there is a lot of respect for the top tier of the Mountain West. San Diego State getting a six, and then Utah State comfortably sliding in. So, happy for them. Glad to see them in the tournament. A pretty good draw, honestly. Utah State draws Texas Tech. If they can get by that one, that's a tough game. It's a 6-11. Uh, but then Arkansas and Colgate in a 3-14. I think there's a chance there if Utah State can find a way to get by Tech who's coming out of one of the best conferences in all of uh, college basketball, the Big 12, maybe the best conference right there with the Big 10. Uh, I think there's a possibility for a run for Utah State. What say you, Trevor? You know, they're, they've are they they've been really spotty hit and miss, but as, as you mentioned, they're in a very tough conference out of the Big 12. I mean, just going up and down their, their schedule. Back in January, they, they had a two-point win over Texas, who went on to win the Big 12 championship game. In, in their tournament, they lost by eight to Baylor, who was, you know, at times number one in, or sorry, two uh, in, in the country behind the Zags. I mean, the Zags have been ranked number one for seems like a year now. Um, and then, you know, playing against teams like Oklahoma, getting wins over them. West Virginia going down to the wire. Kansas losing by only six points. Oklahoma State, who probably has the the number one pick in, in uh, Cade Cunningham. Um and, you know, actually sweeping Texas. So as I'm looking up and down the schedule, they've actually swept Texas this year eight, until they lost to them in the uh, in, in the quarterfinals of the Big 12 tournament. So it's a really good team. And Mac was a guy who BYU was was a, uh, a, a finalist to potentially land him coming out of Georgetown, right? He was. And, and Mac McClung's a big-time talent, and I'm excited to see him in this March Madness stage. He left Georgetown to go to Texas Tech, and, yeah, did have his uh, finalist uh, was – 
BYU, and there was a big recruitment from guys like Yoli Childs and former BYU athletes to get him to BYU. So we'll see him in March Madness. We'll see Utah State back in the dance. I'm happy they got in because I felt like they deserved it. After that loss to San Diego State, I'm like, you, you can't knock a team because they lost to a top 25 team in a conference tournament setting. They've been there three years in a row. There's some sweat equity. That program's had recent success. I think Utah State well-deserved to get in. But I will say, when the first four was revealed and Wichita State was in there, I thought, uh-oh, that could be bad for the Aggies because I just assumed if they're going to be in, they're going to be in the first four. But the, the committee liked them enough. And like you said, Matt, I think there's a little bit more respect given the Mountain West Conference and maybe mid-majors as a whole, which I came away with as a, as a big talking point in this tournament, is that Drake got into the tournament. Uh, you know, because seeing, seeing the bid thieves last night from the Big East and Georgetown and Oregon State in the Pac-12, I thought some of the mid-majors were going to be squeezed out of the field of 68. But overall, I think this is a pretty good bracket, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun for these local teams. And it all starts up on Friday as Utah State will be in action Friday afternoon. We don't have we don't have tip times yet. We don't have locations. We know it's going to be in Indianapolis, uh, and then BYU will be in action on Saturday. Matt, what do you think of BYU's draw after you know Michigan State, UCLA, and who knows? Maybe it could be another you know one of the first four out if the Sparty or, or Bruins have any COVID nineteen issues. What do you think of like Texas and the rest of that regional? The teams that BYU could potentially face if they do make a run. I think. I think Bill is in a great spot. Uh, it, Texas is a good team, but just in watching them in the Big 12 tournament, they don't strike me as a team that sc scares me. I, I think BYU has proven, if we go back to that first half against Gonzaga, do they need to shoot 69% to beat teams? No, but if they can avoid what happened in the second half, and split the difference, they can beat a Texas. I mean, they were knocking on the door, guys, for beating Gonzaga in the conference tournament. And and if they play as well as they did in that game, in which they lost by 10, but with five minutes to go, they were within single digits. I think they can beat anyone. I, Texas, they have a senior guard. I, I think it's Matt. He's a Matt. That's not Matt Campbell, because that's the Iowa State coach, but I'm forgetting his name off the top of my head. He dropped over 30 the other night for, for Texas. He's dangerous, but they don't – no one in BYU's path right now, even even Alabama, I think Alabama at the two seed, they're a good team. That's a team that BYU can beat. Do, do Would I pick BYU to beat them? I don't know. I want to see how they play in their first-round game. But there's no one on their side of the bracket where I look at and say, no chance they'll beat this team. Now, hold on, Matt. Do you have BYU in the Final Four in your bracket? i got to know this. <laughs> Uh, I haven't filled out my bracket yet because I got to do a deep dive tomorrow morning. I, I, I because there's a there's a couple matchups like I'm teetering on taking UC Santa Barbara to the Sweet 16, but I got to do a deep that dive. Team. Team. I think I will probably have BYU in the Sweet 16. I will say this though, guys, the one disadvantage to playing in in this particular matchup is a team like UCLA or Michigan State could find some rhythm playing in that first four where BYU is going to be in quarantine. They're going to be locked down in Indy for a long time. So that's one thing I am concerned about. It's always dangerous to play one of these teams because they can get rolling. We've seen that before where a first four team wins a couple games, but I'll probably end up taking BYU to the Sweet 16, Trevor. On the flip side, though, of that argument, Matt, because I, I do agree, we saw a little bit of that in the West Coast Conference Tournament where BYU was in a slugfest with Pepperdine who had a game under their belt, BYU struggled, squeezed it out to win it, but uh, it can be a little bit tough when you don't have that experience on the floor. But we've seen BYU come out of the first four. They win a game against Iona, but then they're gassed against a Jay Crowder Marquette team, and then they get bounced and they're blown out. So it could go either way. You know, maybe if you're BYU, you're hoping Michigan State and UCLA go three overtime, <laughs> wear yourself out, and uh, you're just gassed come up, come up on Saturday. So – We'll see what ends up happening. But I did find it interesting. You know, like the committee goes, we'll give you a six seed BYU, but you're going to play some of these blue bloods as a reward <laughs> for your six seed. But hey, it is what it is. BYU is in the dance for the first time since 2015. I don't think any Cougar fan is going to be whining about that. And BYU, uh, they were in the, the Marriott Center today. They watched Selection Sunday on the big screens. They'll be flying out to Indianapolis, Indianapolis, excuse me, coming up on Monday, tomorrow. And what's notable with COVID-19, everyone from coaches, players, tier one personnel 
They all got to test negative between now uh, and and when they play on Saturday. So that's something to continue to monitor as BYU really hasn't had any stoppages on their own uh, due to the COVID-19 pandemic. So that's something that maybe Mark Pope, even as he mentioned just moments ago, uh, gave him a little bit PTSD, as I think of what he said. That was a phrase, paraphrasing there, when he saw Virginia and Duke have the ballot in their conference tournaments because of this pandemic. Real quick, though, guys, before we get out on this, uh, any Cinderella's? Matt kind of teased UC Santa Barbara, the fight in Jim Rome's, the Gauchos. <laughs> uh, Trevor, is there a Cinderella potential that you like in this bracket? Mm, like making it to the Final Four type of Cinderella? Like making it to the second weekend, Trevor, because I think that's Cinderella worthy. Uh, I like Oregon. Seven Pac-12, of course, that comes from Trevor. Please, Trevor. Come Oregon's on. really good. Hey, I'll also put this out there, too. USC. Evan oh, Mobley. another Pac-12. Jeez. Hey, that's fine. Okay? You guys can't can't say the bags because guess what? They're the number one seed. <laughs> They're not a Cinderella. <laughs> I know. But, They're the favorite. But USC, Evan Mobley is legit. And anybody on, on this stream who says otherwise – needs to rethink their 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 basketball knowledge. That guy is legit because he went off for 26 and like 14 against the Utes in a double overtime battle, might I add. I'm gonna but, go with I'm gonna go with a, a Cinderella. I'm gonna say Rutgers, uh 10 seed. They're Rutgers is a good Clemson one too. in the opening round. Clemson's not inspiring at all. Houston, we'll see. I, they're talented, sure. Kelvin Sampson's done a nice job, but I, I think Rutgers, they were kind of one of the great stories last year. They got the tournament taken away like everyone else did. Uh, that's a team that kind of piques my interest. I also think just at first glance, because like Matt and, and you, Trevor, I haven't filled this thing out yet. Um, I, I think that, you know, th there's not many ones that pop off the page. Rutgers stands out. Also, maybe Georgia Tech. Uh, they ins they impressed me in the ACC tournament. I know there could be a, like a little bit of an asterisk. They only won two games. They avoided Virginia because of COVID-19. But uh, that guard number 10, he's, he, his name's drawn in a blank. But, man, he's a oh, yeah. tough son of a gun and it seems like he's just going to be one of those dudes that just lays it out on the floor does everything he can to win it for his team so they draw Loyola Chicago the what was that grandma the aunt Jean or what oh, was her name, oh, I know what was her name. I name I'm drawing a blank but we go to the final that, four, that's awesome. so. but um yeah, hey Mitch know. Something else I'll, I'll, I'll throw out and and they're actually opening up against the Pac-12 school so there you go Matt Georgetown <laughs> Georgetown, no, watch no. out for them. I'm not, no, I'm not, I'm saying, I'm saying far away from Georgetown. That was a nice little run they had to get to the Big East, but I, I don't think they're that good. Yeah. I'm just saying, they, I, they, be down. they beat Creighton by like 30 points. You know, Trevor, if that happened, the narrative of the Pac-12 would just continue to get wrecked in the national. It's, it's already <laughs> as low as it goes, Mitch. Just that would be even coming. worse, though. Keep it coming. I, I, no, I'm just saying, like, that would be really bad. I would also say Cinderella potentially, too, Utah State. I, I think Utah yeah. State could be a Cinderella. I, I, I think that draws decent. Um, you know, Utah State, when's the last time? That, I got to look back in the archives. It's been a while, though, since they've been in the second weekend. But yeah. Here, here's, here's one more I'm, I'm really – I'm going to sleep on tonight. Ohio over Virginia. Virginia, Virginia had to bow out of the ACC tournament. We'll see how rusty they are coming back in, if they, if they even clear. They were I also mean, the first number one seed to lose a tournament game in the first round years ago. So Ohio, so win the national title. Ohio is tempting. I usually like to pick one 13 over four just to get crazy. So that, that might be the one, but I'm still feeling really good about uh, Santa Barbara. Yeah. I, I want to see some craziness and maybe this year is going to create some wild results because of the pandemic and anything's going to happen. I think we're all just thrilled though, to see this bracket, see oh, it there. Yeah. Uh, it's it's signals it some sort of, sort of normalcy, and we'll have you fully covered here on KSLSports.com. Uh, going to be in Indianapolis at at the on location, so KSL Sports is going to have you covered uh, from start to finish with the local teams and everything in between with the NCAA tournament. And again, go to uh, March Mayhem uh, to go and fill out your bracket so you can win big. Uh, here on our kslsports.com um, bracket mayhem on on uh, brought to you by uh, Wasatch Medical Clinic. So, guys, uh, it's been a pleasure talking to you here on Selection Sunday. Uh, Trevor, talk to you soon, and Matt Biamonte will chat again on uh, Cougar Sports Saturday this week. Sounds good. Have a good one, guys.